All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining us for another Tack and Lunch and Learn. We're excited today to be talking about AI-powered uh, higher ed marketing and some of the efforts and so forth. So Piero is the CEO and founder of Terminal 4. Uh, they're actually one of our annual sponsors uh, for Tackham. So they help fund both these lunch and learns as well as other efforts that we do throughout the year. So really appreciate them uh, not only sponsoring and showing their support of us during the year, but they were a conference sponsor this past year. So hopefully some of y'all got to talk with Chris uh, last summer or uh, you'll get to talk with him at the conference this coming year. But um, want to just thank you, Pior, for coming on and joining us and coming from, you're, are you in Dublin? Or, I'm in Dublin at the moment, but yeah. usually, yeah, I'm, I'm either between here or Boston. So, um, so, so don't let Irish his accent today, fool you. Right? Don't let his accent fool you that he knows everything. You can still ask some questions and, and try to stump him. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for that. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, yeah, no, I, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm usually bouncing around every state or in, in the US um, around the, throughout the year and uh, going to like, as I was meeting a lot of universities and, and colleges. But listen, thank you so much for, for inviting me along today um, for the lunch session. And um, I guess one of the things that's really interesting, I think about this is that it's the AI, firstly, everyone's talking about it, right? But I suppose one of the problems is that with that is everybody's talking about it and it's about how do you actually boil it down to things that I could do to save me time. So what I want to try and do is today is keep it very practical. So I'm going to run through, give you a good overview of what's going on in this whole AI area, try and cut through the, like, you know, what you can, what you might read about in different things, you know, about chat GBT and, you know, all this sort of stuff, but try and give you a bit of a flavor for what's, what's actually going on, give you an, a bit more of a flavor as to what's coming, coming in the future. And as I said, this is changing just so quickly. I was at, um, I was lucky to, to be invited to, to Amazon Web Services uh, headquarters in Seattle back last September. And they were literally saying that there's new innovations like every two weeks. So if something can't be done now, just wait two weeks. <laughs> and then it's just crazy. And like a version of this presentation I did last year, I then did another version um, in September and I've had to literally almost update it and rewrite it um, because there's just been so much so many things going on anyway right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive in and uh, look a tiny uh, just one slide just to introduce us um, we work with quite a lot of colleges and universities across Texas um, I suppose we came from the world of web content management but it's all about sort of digital good good solid digital experiences for students. The one thing I would say is if you are interested, we do have a blog that's completely non-commercial. We share lots of examples and good ideas of, um, you know, spotting out, pointing out people's good work, uh, spotting trends, writing about them. So if you want to follow just things that we're doing and, um, you know, things that are going on in higher ed, um, definitely that's the place to be. So in terms of just today, um, I was going to aim for about 45 minutes, maybe a little bit over. Um, please, just any questions, just I'll be able, I'll ch what I'll do is I'll check in, in on the chat every, every so often if you have any questions or if you want to put up your hand and also allow for a little bit of time at the end. And, you know, if you want to connect, um, you know, the QR code, I hadn't used one of those in years. So uh, I decided to, to include it in the slide today, uh, seeing that they've had a bit of a revival. Um, okay, so today what I'm going to do is talk about um, I suppose, cover quite a few topics. The, the first one I'm going to talk about are the different, the different AI technologies and what are called AI models. So out there in the newspaper or out there in the, in the newspapers, in the news and everything, you hear people talking about AI, AI, and the word pretty AI is, is being used way too much in probably the wrong way. So I'm going to try and break it down into like, well, what, what is it really? Um, I'm going to tr point out and some tools that you can use so you can get um, get working with different AI models and um, so that you can actually get moving pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of the new way of working, just a small example, just to sort of, just to sort of explain like just how powerful it can be and how it literally can change how you sometimes even approach your day-to-day -day work. It, it's actually been pretty amazing for me um, in doing particular tasks, uh, particularly ones that could be just time consuming or repetitive or even just uh, where it might need a lot of research. You can do things quite, 
quickly. What I'm going to then focus on are like practical things and practical examples of how you can use AI in uh, higher education. I'm going to talk about these things called prompts, who you, which you might be aware of, but these are like basically how you give instructions to an AI engine um, and why they're so important and, and how to get the most out of them. And then what we're going to do is about eight hours work in about 10 minutes. So it's a good example. I'm going to use an example around course catalogs and talk you through some of the problems that happen with course catalogs in universities and colleges these days uh, and then actually try and produce a better course catalog what could have been say eight hours work but we're going to do it in 10 minutes so um which i'll show you what can be achieved in actually a short amount of time and then we have time for questions and things like that so in terms of so the, as i mentioned the initials ai are sort of thrown around so so much out there but actually what most people are talking about are some of these layers of this onion, I guess. Um, there's many, many layers to, to AI, but well, actually there's really just one layer that is AI, but actually all of these layers tend to be called AI when they're being spoken about. So really what you're talking about, if you're going back to say, you've got things like, um, I suppose you've got the sort of shallow, part which is what would you call like data science that is going in and you know it's crunching numbers in a spreadsheet or looking for patterns and stuff like that that you'd call that data science right but again people sometimes call that ai typically and, and it doesn't help that actually a lot of funding in the software sector is funding tends to attach itself to um to, to initials like um, AI. So they tend to throw in the letters AI after their name, which confused the matters even worse. There's uh, artificial intelligence, right, AI. There's machine learning, deep learning, and artificial neural networks, right? And I suppose what you're really, really getting to is in say data science, you're talking about actually crunching the numbers and making decisions. Where it gets to like, the deeper you go, it's actually the computers making decisions and things like that. It's a little bit like, I don't know, like um, some of the movies and uh, so on, where like everybody, the things take over and stuff like that. So I suppose if you think about it, something just spotting patterns is probably, if it's manual, it's probably data science, but it could even be machine learning where it's looking for patterns um, in images, right? So a lot of say image recognition is actually um is actually machine learning the big big topic at the moment is actually called generative ai and this is where you can and this is what i'm going to talk about a lot about today is where you've you've got these very very clever engines and they are actually able to generate stuff so you've probably seen examples with like chat gpt or images being generated and stuff like that so they have this big they've been fed in these models have been fed in lots of information. So they might be fed in you know, millions and millions of photographs of what different fruit look like. And then if you say, well, can you generate an image of a large apple um, or something like that, it, it, or a bowl of apples, it knows what to do, right? So when you actually so look at this it's really there are many layers i guess and i suppose it's just just be aware that it there just because it's called ai doesn't actually mean that it is ai but today we're going to focus on this part of it called generative ai so within all of this there's actually quite a lot of tools to get up and running with um in generative ai without having to um, go into like the technicalities and i think this is the biggest thing that has changed probably in the last 15 months it was really early last year where things really really changed with the launch of chat gbt um i think that was around november wasn't it um november of 22 um but actually there's been there's lots of tools now that have both come out since and that were around in the background but typically they, they've um that they weren't great in the beginning and they're getting better but i suppose one the key thing about these is what these have allowed you to do is get into this whole area without actually needing to be very technical years ago you would need to go in and make the models and do really sort of like you know do very 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 technical things to get up and running but actually 
that's not needed anymore. So some of these, right, you've, you've heard of like the open AI chat GBT side of things. That's a uh, text that's really good at generating text Now they support images now. Um, but it's very good at managing text. Um, and I'm going to talk about this, like how, how these work a little bit, because there's some really interesting stuff that's coming up um, in the future. There is mid journey which you might have heard of. This is a very good one for a good engine for generating imagery. And it's some, some of this fantastic imagery. So like, so what people are doing is sort of, let's call it amateur or, you know, small uh, indie type game developers are using engines like this to generate all of the little graphics that it needs, that they need to build a computer game. So like, you know, you might need, well, look, we're, we need to put in trees in whatever environment you're building, you can actually have the AI engine develop lots and lots of different types of trees and it's saving lots of time and effort. There are other good ones out there, like for copywriting, this is like Notion. There's one out there that, although it, it's still a bit early days, I think called Galileo, which is a UI design, um, so ones for music. I, I haven't seen the, my impression of the music ones that aren't brilliant, but I think I'm sure other people can get more out of them than I can. Um, but there's a lot of these different tools to play around with. And what these do is they allow you to get, dive into the AI, generative AI technology without actually needing to be technical at all. Now, how are these built, right? So these are ones built for particular uh, particular types of information. So today we're going to talk a lot about, say, uh, ChatGPT and OpenAI. One of the big things is, is, I suppose, ultimately how that was built up is that there's a bit of controversy over it because they took in a lot of content um, and they took a lot of content in that they probably they hadn't got permission for. But I anyway, that's another story. But they fed in lots of content into it, like even from Wikipedia, uh, the large publishers, things like that. And they train these models. Now, as you know, there's problems with these models, right? That the, the problem is sometimes the information isn't correct. Um, there's also a thing I'll talk about later on called hallucination. They're very confident, but they're so confident sometimes they're confident that they're right, even when they're not right. So I'll talk a little bit about that later on. So what's really, really happening and the big development over the last sort of three, four, five months is that these things um, called base models now, you have, may not have heard of any of these names at all. The biggest ones that are used behind a lot of things are ones like the, what's called Llama 2 and the Hugging Face um, AI model. These are basically empty brains, I guess, that can now be fired up. And what I mean by that is like, for example, you can literally go in with a credit card into Amazon Web Services and other providers and say, I want an empty model. So one of the problems that you have with ChatGPT, um, for example, is, is you don't know where it's got the content from. Like it might be incorrect. With these base models, with technical skills, you can just basically fire one up straight away and you can feed it in with base information. So for example, you might have one of these models, for example, might be very good at managing, like handling text. I think the Llama 2 one is, uh, um, the Llama 2 and the Hugging Face ones are more text-based. So what you could do is it knows how to read, it knows how to learn, but it doesn't know anything about the outside world. Or means it might just know a base, you know, base understanding of say English or different and other languages. So one of the things, for example, I saw as a demonstration was somebody took a base, um, a baseline, a base model, and they trained it up. They gave it a full K through 12 education by just pushing in, you know, books and so on. So it gave it a base education. Then they fed it in um, basically all of the, 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 the course material for uh, say a, a degree in law. And then they started feeding in all of the stuff like legislation and all of the stuff that you know becomes being a lawyer. And they were able to get it and fine tune it for a particular state. They got it to a level, what they said was they got it to a level with probably somebody with five to 10 years working experience in law. And that was their model, but they had control over what went into it. Now, 
that's that's a mod that's all around right that's everything to do with sort of um obviously law and you're like well okay this has nothing to do with that uh, with us so what's interesting though is is where this is going in a really interesting direction in higher education is when you have a student you say interacting with say something using ai with your college or university you want to make sure they're getting the correct answer right you don't want it to be sort of making it up you don't want them hallucinating you don't want them to um have incorrect information so what you can do is where this is going is that organizations will be able to use a base model and actually you can populate it with your information that you know is 100 percent correct and that means you have much more control on it than say for example a student going into chat gpt and asking about you know your particular college or university and i think this is where it's really really interesting um because you now can have potentially control over what the engine is, uh, is 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 talking about and what information it's using to have a conversation with somebody um, any questions on that uh, <laughs> i see there wanted to say is there is there an ai tool that will create a full marketing brief for me do you know what it's actually that sort of stuff is 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 actually not too hard what it's very what you can what, where we use a lot of a lot of it is actually for ideas so what it mightn't be it mightn't write you an exact like, perfect strategy or marketing brief but what it can do is it come up with ideas and you can also now it's, it's getting better to actually you can get into a conversation with it uh, i'll talk about prompts in a moment but you can say ask me any more questions if you're unclear about anything and it will actually get into a conversation with you so so we've for example had it help us write um you know come up with like a strategy and ideas now we might you know we want to read through it and tailor but it just comes up with ideas and it's very good at saving that sort of um or what you could say is here's a draft of of my plan you know can i have some feedback what do you think is there things i'm missing or 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 if you were this person reading this you know are there things i should address um yeah i think that's really exactly the point there and um, john just mentioned is that uh it, it gives you good starting points or seeds to work from and i think that's that's that just can save a lot of time so to, to think about the next part of just the presentation the big part of all of this so you've talked we talked about the generative models that exist at the moment it's really the next thing is all about the prompts so a prompt is a structured way of communicating with an ai tool so you can get the best results from it right so that means is is that if people go in and just say can i have a marketing brief right it's firstly it's probably gonna an engine that's pretty good probably like the um chat gbt 3.5 might sort of try and do it without any extra information chat gbt 4 will actually say i need more information here's a list of questions so what you do is this is a good little sort of like model that you can use for developing out your a, a chat gbt prompt it's so firstly what you do is you define the roles so you say who are you right you say sorry who do you want the engine to be so you would say you are a marketing executive or experienced marketing copywriter or you are a you know a director of marketing and so then what you say is so in our case for example we're going to talk about like writing content for um, um say for example for students so you might say well i am a marketing copywriter with experience in student recruitment then you need to be clear about the target audience so that can include things like their age who they are and so on so you could say well i'm not trying to write content for say um someone between 15 and 18 years of age um who is interested in studying and i want to write um i want to write content that's engaging uh, and, and makes them sound feel interested in this particular topic you then tell it the channels you say i want to write this for a blog i want to write this for a website i want to write an email and so on what you can do then is you can chain things you can start linking things together and build on it if you're not getting the right results you can refine it and you can also modify the output so you could say no i want it to be laid out better i want it to be written in a very digestible form or i want can you some make it short or can you make it longer and then it will actually output it all um it's really handy i'm going to work through some examples but what i've done is in this in today's presentation what i have is is i'm going to quickly show you some of these um 
examples. These are very particular sort of like tools that can actually help you with these. So I think I can, let me see if I can quickly share without having to unshare. Um, sorry, give me one second, where is the... Sorry, one second, I've got my Chrome. Oh, I see it here, perfect. Okay, so for example, so what I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna point you to a few little tools and these are in the slides. So um, I can share those afterwards as well if you want the actual links and things like that there as well. And um, this is a thing called prompt stacks. So if you want, this is a good place to go if you want help. So what people have done is that they've sort of like written up, so like documented good practice examples of different prompts that you could use to do particular things. So you could say, go into say health and um, health and fitness. You could say someone, I don't know, maybe they want to build up a, a training plan for something like that. Go into marketing copywriter. People are saying, well, I want to, here's somebody saying, well, I want to like act as if I'm a, a New York Times reporter. So people sort of comment and help each other with different prompts. The other one, this is a very good one for um, visual, visual um, image generation where you can actually start literally picking say well I want to generate some imagery that looks like um, uh, Leonardo da Vinci I want to have it at high resolution in formats I want it to be based on sort of like an, an action shot um, perspective and so basically what it does is it helps you sort of build up examples of what your prompt could be so you could say, well, I want to have it as um, a darkened background, and then you could have different styles, and it could be, you could have Leonardo da Vinci doing Art Deco, and so on. But anyway, it just gives you lots of examples of sort of like, of all of the different prompts. So there's lots of these prompt builders out there to help you along the way. Um, again, there's another one here, which is Prompt Chat, which is another discussion forum. Um, that you can sort of like uh, and good examples as well and then and um, this is another another example that uh, actually is really good this is actually <laughs> helps you generate a prompt using AI which is definitely um, yeah, it's an interesting one from that point of view um, okay so then just going back into um, my slides there and um, what I'm actually gonna one of the big things I'm going to focus on is to go into practical example so there's lots of things you can do. It's very, very good at generating ideas. So coming out with like, okay, I am trying to target this target audience in aeronautical engineering. Can you come up with 20 ideas of things or campaigns that we could run or blog post topics that are different ideas or social media campaign ideas as to uh, what we could do to raise awareness about some particular course or program. It, it's really good at that. And it won't judge you, right? Which is really nice. You can sort of like, you can, you'll see some of it. It might ask for more details. You can pick what are the things that are interesting, get it to expand. It's very good at generating new content. Um, and we're going to use that as an example. It's very, very good for repurposing content. So you can take, say, content. Uh, and the example we're going to use today is I'm going to take some really, really poor quality course catalog content, like really pretty poor. Um, but I don't think it's unusual, right? It comes from an actual course catalog and I'm actually gonna generate different types of content uh, from that base content. And um, it's also good at coming up with calls to actions based on sort of like a best practice as well, social media posts. It's good at getting a larger post and digesting it down and so on, uh, rewriting and also, um, search engine optimization. But these are just simple examples, like the, the things that I've used for say, like if we're writing a case study, I've given the engines that here's the sort of layout of a case study that we write. And I've been asked it to almost like interview me, like, it, like as it was interviewing me to write a case study and I answer it. And then one of our clients had a, had like a, a new story about the project we work on. So I've, now um, ChatGPT can look out on the internet. So you can like give it the URL of the, the news about the particular project and it will take that in and so on. So one of the things I'm gonna jump in now and show you is actually in real life. Um, we're gonna do a little project, as I said, about eight hours work. Um, as all of you sort of, I'm sure very aware, 
one of the things that we're seeing in the research that we do with different uh, clients is that when we do the research with the students, one of the things we're seeing them do is they're going to the course course find or course catalog search or whatever you call it. But what they want to do is that they want to find, can they study a particular thing in subject or discipline in your particular institution? So that is becoming more, when we're doing user testing, that is something that's coming out, is that they want to see, can I study whatever the subject is in your college or university? So what they're looking for, and we're seeing this much more in website design in recent times, is they want the sort of the search facility up in front on the website in a much more prominent place than it would have been years ago. The challenge for many institutions though, is the course catalog is not often that the, the feature that has been built for, um, which has not been built for um, the pro, you know, a really good experience, right? The content is typically written by either academics or other people uh, and so on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a particular example here uh, in real life. And I'm gonna show you a real life university, but, I think we'll all be very kind to this particular university because I think it is not unusual, um, definitely not unusual um, as to how this, uh, this particular um, university you know, writes about their courses and programs, right? So this is a very, very, um, a very, very standard sort of course catalog that I'm sure many of you seen. It's, it's based on the Acalog application, but in practice, right, it's not really an Acalog issue. It's that this is where I can go and find out everything I can study, and it goes down to huge amounts of detail. But actually, this is, in this particular university, this is where they're pointing people to, to do the research around a particular course and program. So, you can see here that I say I'm interested in, in aerospace engineering. It's really, it's listing off all the particular requirements. It has, you know, like this is it, right? This is, this is them trying to get this person to be excited about this particular course and program, right? But I think, as I said, this is very common. We see this all over the place. So imagine we've been given a project um, and the project is we want to build a really good course catalog and search facility so that students on the home page of the university can go and find what they can study and be engaged about it and all of the marketing things around this. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this content and we're actually going to work on um, we're going to work on some content together. So I have chat GBT. Um, this is the, the paid version, so it's like $20 a month or something like that. Up here, which is important, you'll see is that there has different versions and you can do plugins. The version four, if I would have said like six months ago when it was first launched, it, it was sort of, it wasn't great, it, but actually what I found is it has got better. Um, definitely it's more conversational. I don't know if they made changes or maybe I'm just getting used to using it. But what I found is, is that 3.5 can't remember, like it's like we're having a conversation and the person is forgetting what we just spoke about. Um, but version four will actually, I, I'll leave these little conversations open. So if I'm talking about a case study and in a week's time, I want to create another case study, I can go, oh, remember that case study we did last week? It's, um, you know, I want to create a new one in the same format and so on and I will remember that whole conversation and, and and so on so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start a conversation here um so what I'm firstly going to do I have written up here I've got some prompts pre-prepared and I'm going to write in here um so you are skilled as a, co a skilled copywriter in a university ma uh, marketing and recruitment team you're um writing engaging content for potential students at the university typically read by students between 15 and 18 years of age. When, uh, when you write, you want the content to encourage a student to express interest in the degree you are promoting. The content should be SEO optimized and where possible, highlight potential career opportunities. I need to spell opportunities correctly. Um, although it, it's, very, it's very nice to me and my poor spelling. And basically I'm telling us that um, 
I, I'm, that's basically I'm giving it the prompt, okay? So this is, you can see, remember the little diagram I had with all the different colors? This is actually where, um, so what I'm now gonna do is, um, what I sometimes do is I would say, don't continue until I tell you. So what I'm gonna put in the next line is, you're, uh, you're provided with the following content on, um, from an academic uh, degree called uh, aerospace engineering, okay? And what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go right in here and I am just going to, actually I could just take all of this, right? Absolutely not great content, very broken out and everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to drop that in here and I'm just going to actually get it. So now it's going off and doing its thinking and stuff like that. So I've now digested all of this sort of stuff. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to, I'm just going to stop it there because I don't want it to continue. Now, what I want to do is, because it will start to actually do around all of this sort of stuff. I'm now going to tell it, I'm going to now start with that base information upon this particular, um, on this particular degree. I'm going to now tell it. So the first thing I'm just, remember I said to pick the channel and the output. Can you create, 600 words of content for a landing page on the university website that promotes the career potential of this degree and encourages a student to reach out um, to the university and schedule a campus visit. So now I sort of stopped it because I hadn't quite defined, I found that sometimes it does go on ahead and you can tell it to do that. So what it does, is it starts actually writing some good content. Um, version four takes longer and now, what I would suggest is, is if you're using this yourself, one of the things you can do as part of the prompt is set the tone so that it's more in tune with your university and your voice. And like, this is what it's come from for nothing. You know, it's starting to come up with exploring, you know, it's trying to make it a little bit exciting. Um, why choose aeronautical engineering, careers, opportunities ahead and stuff like that. Some really good ideas there. And it's, it's writing some good stuff. And it's actually looking at different things like, um, you know, we're trying to get them to do a campus visit and when they're, um, you know, think, again, it comes up with ideas. Now, some of these might not make sense, right? Meet our esteemed faculty. They might not be very esteemed or very, um, they might not be the type of um, members of faculty that you want to wheel out in front of students. But, you know, you can use this as, as a good base. And it's not about, and, and if you don't like it, you can actually just get it to redo it based on, and maybe feed, we do, it's better to sort of give it feedback there. So what you want to do is I want to say, for example, adapt it. So what you say, I wanted to make it a little bit sort of for a younger audience. And for example, here, it will take the same content and it will actually just maybe break, get the reading level right. And maybe, um, yeah, I can't really spot things that are, yeah, well, it's maybe starting to use things like super cool, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, to 14, 16 year olds use words like that these days, I don't know. Um, but it certainly adapted the content. Now, what I want to do is then maybe I want to take some other content and I'm actually going to, I'll stop that there just to save time. I'm going to say, I want to say summarize, maybe there's a little sort of landing page and you want to get just a summary of all of those. If you think of these topics, these are just, there's a lot of stuff here. And a lot of these are repeated, but in this case, I want to actually come up with theirs. It's sort of coming to, it's giving a good overview of what's involved, um, of what this is and what it means in plain English. Okay, and then I can also, what it's really handy is for those of you who are involved in pathways, um, you know, there's a lot of particularly community colleges uh, are focusing on sort of pathway, pathways you can do things like career information. So you can say, can you add a paragraph to include potential salaries and career opportunities and stuff like that as well. Now this will also pull in, um, you know, you can get subscriptions for things like, um, you know, the different salaries and stuff like that and the different career paths. But this here is actually using, it can use external data uh, and you can pinpoint it, by the way, if you want it to be more specific. I, I would say for things like these numbers, just maybe double check them or give them a sanity check and stuff like that as well. So you've, um, yeah, any any questions on that so far? Yeah, so it's, um, yeah, so it's a limit on how the prompts can be. I haven't seen, so what I have seen there being a limit is if you're having this like long conversation, it's, there's a thing called tokens, I think, in inside these things. And it's like, 
you're t my wife says this about me is I talk for too long and then she, <laughs> she forgets what I said at the start. <laughs> Maybe that's, uh, that's, I think that's just, a, 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 but I think it's sort of, ha sometimes that does happen where it's sort of like, it's not necessarily the prompt be too like, being too long, but it's actually your conversation is too long. So what I try and do is get as much, what I then is, if it's going on for too long, I try and, and I've refined the prompt, I then almost give them the prompt again in one go. And that seems to sort of get it right. And um, so you can, so you can, uh, so in the versions of ChatGBT, you can definitely give it web addresses and stuff like that. Um, if you are using base models, you can definitely scan it. So we're doing some work with our search engine technology that we have at the moment, where we're actually able to um, spider the content and crawl the content and put it into the, one of the base models. So at the moment, I don't believe you can just get it to scan everything that's yours in a, very, in a way that you'd be very confident, but you can say, give it, look, for example, I like found this web page on, aerospace engineering can you incorporate that into it it will definitely go off and do that you can also upload um files so if you have a pdf or something like that and um, this is very handy if you've been given say a, a document to read you could say here's the pdf can you create a two-page summary of this document for me or here's a document that nasa has say or Boeing has uh, produced on careers in aeronautical engineering. You maybe one of you is a partner with Boeing. You could then have it incorporate that content into it um, as well. Um, okay, so we'll we'll keep on with our eight hours. Yeah, of one work. question, real quick, too, that I have. Sure. Is, so I know. So we're a Microsoft shop, and so we have a lot of you know the tie-in with Bing and and so forth. Um, I know that Bing uses Chat GPT for. Um, have you? use the Bing chat to see if you can get the similar results or is it kind of too Microsoft flavored? I, what I found was with the Bing version, and this is, sorry, I, I sort of tried it initially and I haven't sort of gone back to it was because I sort of was a little put off because it was, if you think of the chat GBT when they were trying to curate the content, right? The Bing one was almost the other extreme. I just, I found it just not as helpful it was fine for like quick answers, but I didn't find it as great for generating stuff, if that right. makes sense. Like yeah, it almost- That, that sounds about like much. what my experience has been. Yeah, exactly. So if you think about it low, everybody's trying to like, you know, SEO optimize everything. And they're sort of playing around with it where at least ChatGPT started off with having a small amount of content that they knew was correct, right? And I use correct definitely in, in quotes because it can not be correct, but it's at least they're trying to have it correct. Um, with being it was just too wide and unwieldy, I think. Uh, but it says it changes every two weeks, so you know, give it a shot. Um, if there's a few other ones now that's new, the Copilot stuff in Microsoft Office as well looks pretty cool, where it'll help you write emails and that. Um, the so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this. So I'm going to so, so it now knows a bit about this particular degree, and I'm actually going to get it to write like a blog post. So I'm now going to say I put in I'm going to promote the degree on. Uh, uh, 800 word blog post aimed at the most innovating, innovative new developments in this field and so on. And certainly when I've done this before, it's actually been pretty good actually. It's come up with new ideas, new interesting things that are going on in, uh, um, you know, in the world and so, oh, there it's done a little, yeah, that doesn't usually happen, but it sort of comes up with like a little error sometimes if it's, um, if it's under pressure or something like that, um, I'll let it work away. It probably knows we're all looking at it, doing all its work, but it's um, you know, it's trying to come up with new ideas again, again, ideas for like blog posts out of some of this content as well. So you know, it's it's you know, there's some interesting stuff going on there. You could then say another area where it's really handy for say if you want to create like meta tags and stuff like that. So I'm just going to stop that there. I'm going to say, well, I want to create SEO HTML meta tags for a web page. It will actually give you the code, and it's very handy for like developers because you can do all of this sort of stuff automatically. Um, you know, I want to say, for example, here's, um, you know, there's it doing its code. I want to now put in, I want to create a 45, um, a four, 45 second TikTok video to go with the blog post. Um, hang on, let me see, why is it? Maybe it wasn't finished. Yeah, perfect, okay. Um, why is it? Is it still working away? 
Oh, it is. Um, yeah, so it's now going to come up at a 40. Yeah, sorry, it was giving me all an explanation of how to use it and stuff like that and, and so on. Right. So you can see here what's interesting is, is that, OK, so we manually created some good course catalog content out of all of like this base, really, you know, very basic content here. But actually where we can get interesting and where you can like automate a lot of this sort of stuff here is you can go in here to say I in this case I'm using Zapier and I've created these like chains of actions. So what in this particular case here, it's reading in a course catalog content file. So what I'm going to try and do is I'll find something that is um I'll try and find something um a course or program say in economics um and we'll find something very quantitative economics. This sounds very, very exciting indeed. Apologies if anyone has a, um, <laughs> a major in quantitative economics, but I'm going to drop this in here. I'm sorry, I'm just, what I'm just doing off screen is I'm just creating a little text file um, and I'm going to just save this in as a text file. Um, perfect. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is I have got, this is just my Google Drive. And what I'm going to do now, this hopefully this I had trouble with this before, but I will try and get it. I'm going to file upload, um, and then what I'm going to do is download. Uh, where is desktop? Perfect. And then I have this one here. I'm going to just pick this image here. Okay, and it's uh, or sorry, this um, this piece of text here. What this is doing is this is ingesting. Just so you can see what I've put in here. This is just I cut and paste in all of the the stuff here around the from another from the other different program and it's dropped it in here so what's happening is is that with chat gbt it's running first it's reading in that content it's then having a conversation with this particular uh, about this particular course from now the only problem there i just noticed is that it's 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 taking in um it's taking it i'm going to just quickly go in here and it's sort of it's got that sort of fine tuned yeah from an academic degree so what i need to do is actually publish this um it's sorry i had it hardwired the name of the program but what it's doing is it's going through this basically taking in the file and having an automated conversation with chat gbt and you can see i'm putting it all in here and it's using the file as the sort of the input and hopefully it might yeah so well, hopefully this works. Uh, the last time it came up, okay, it says, okay, it sort of got, I think because I'd hardwired the name of it, it sort of, uh, it picked it up as aeronautical engineering. But here's what it does. It's creating a whole bundle of things potentially that are are based around. So here's, for example, it's got the, the economics course description automatically. And sorry, it did take it because it had the hardwired thing in it. But if I, Basically, it's taking in this, and you can have all of the output generated literally automatically here based on what you want. So if you'd find a way of doing this for a project you're working on, you can feed things in bulk up using Google Drive and things like Zapier to actually chain all of these activities together. So you could, for example, take your Acalog type course catalog content and actually generate a whole package of marketing material. Look, is it gonna be brilliant? Is it gonna be like the best marketing copy written content that you've ever written? Probably not. But what it will definitely do is probably get you 80% of the way there and it will save you a ton of time. Um, so, you know, I think that hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of some practical sort of things that you can do. Um, so any questions on, on that so far on, on sort of what I've done and, um, and you know anything that you might think of using it for yourselves or you know i can talk a little bit more about that and you know whether it would work or not or does that make sense in how i've managed to chain my so what i did there i guess was i i auto, i manually said had a conversation with the the engine but then when i've got the prompts right i can then automate them using tools like zapier or others to just basically go through the steps and just automatically bring in the file do things and just basically have it have it sort of output um, in a in a package that you can reuse in other places. Um, any questions on that, or?
thoughts or comments? I think this is a really interesting use case where, you know, to some, in some ways it's kind of a macro that you could, you know, for those of you who use macros with Excel or Word or yeah. other tools, but it's macros on steroids where you're really transforming content. And I, I could imagine, yeah. you know, taking photos around your campus and maybe, you know, developing different yeah. content from that or whatever it might be. No, exactly. That that literally, I think there's just a huge opportunity with all of this to like, it is like macros, but I think there's, I was actually surprised when I did the little sort of like hands up who's used sort of this stuff on a day to day basis, because I would say it's just jump into it, even the free version of chat GPT, even to, so the what I'll tell you that the biggest thing that blew my mind was I was trying to organize a, a family trip. And now it didn't go ahead, but I was sort of, I was thinking about like, if we were to um, to go away on a trip. And so if you think about when you sort of are planning out a vacation or whatever, you know, you're literally Googling everything and you're going, you're in TripAdvisor, you're in Google, you're in everywhere, you're trying to find your accommodation and everything. I literally had a conversation with ChatGPT saying, I wanted to go for five days. I've got a fam, we're a family, we've got two girls, age nine and 11, you know, uh, we want, to do some outdoor stuff, you know, but actually do you have, and, and it gave me actually a whole itinerary for the five days. And then I said, look, well, can I had a conversation? I said, well, can you, can you, for the days where we're outdoors, if the weather is bad, can you propose some alternatives? And it just, it, it actually came up with a pretty good plan for how you would spend the five days. And you could say, well, actually, no, we don't want to be too busy. Can you tone it down? And so on. And that just blew my mind because usually I would be the person there, you know, in Google, diving into the detail, trying to sort out where to go, you know, where should we stay, you know, all this sort of stuff. And it was actually really good. And that was before it actually had website access. So now you can do things like, you know, are there any events coming up? Here's here, you know, that could be of interest and stuff like that. And it's actually becoming a lot more useful from that point of view. Um, so if there's a, no more questions, I can dive in just a little bit more and then I'll, I'll finish up. But it's, I guess, one of the, the big things is, is then, of course, I mentioned this is just text generated stuff, right? So what I can do is I can then actually, I mentioned like imagery and things like that before. So this is, this is some stuff I did before. So this is, I hope you can see that. Okay. This is using mid journey where I said, um, I used a prompt at the, which is at the bottom step into the whimsical world of, of aerospace engineering, where our state of the art facilities are designed to inspire creativity and innovation, realistic and futuristic. Look, it came up with pretty good images that at least you could think about from sort of like, um, a marketing campaign uh, and stuff like that. What I found is, look, I think that with imagery, you know, Look, yeah, you see these examples online of like, oh my goodness, it's photorealistic, it's amazing. There can be weird oddities, like there's a simple example of uh, fingers and toes. Often when it shows people, it has people have the wrong number of fingers and toes and things like that. But what I've found, it is good for ideas. So you could at least say if you're giving a brief to somebody saying, well, actually, this is how I might want it to look. Or could you come up with a website example of how a landing page example for a particular campaign. And uh, we've done that just to come up with, again, concepts and ideas. And um, what you do is once you, you find something that's interesting, say for example, this one here, you can have it refine different versions of it and, and things like that as well. So I suppose really just the takeaways, I guess where this sort of gets so exciting, I find it so exciting is it's just so moving. Uh, it's moving so quickly. And I think you just have to dip in and find ways on a day-to-day -day basis where it can actually save you time. You know, I've had it, for example, um, we, when we've needed to reformat data from one format to another, just throw it in and it will reformat out. And um, what I would say is the, the, one of the challenges can be is if you jump in and you don't think about the prompts. And the problem is, is that you sort of don't get great results and it's very easy to sort of to, to say, oh, you know what, that's not, that's not working out very well. Or, you know, ChatGPT is terrible, but actually, or, or any of these other models are, are terrible, but actually it's often the prompt needs to be. So there's lots of good examples on those forums um, of people who've got really good prompts and you can use those. I mean, they're just text. 
so you can borrow them as well and um, you can also have it you can help if you can't get the what you want to achieve into a prompt certainly with chat gbt you can give it the url of a web page that is maybe written in the the voice and the um, and the, and the, in a way you want to write other content you say i want to write more content like this and it will then write content based on what it's read in that particular url you've given it so definitely save yourself time with the prompt builders definitely when i found those myself it just it made life a lot easier i was sort of like avoiding having to i, I was able to avoid getting lost into trying to figure it out all myself um but the key thing I would say is always QA. The quality assurance is important. There's a couple of things that, um, there's a couple of things. Firstly, as I mentioned, hallucination. This hallucination is literally where it thinks it's 100% correct and it's not correct. So it's almost like it's too proud to say, I don't really know. So it, it with 100% confidence, it says, gives you an answer and it's not correct so do quality assure it and, and literally just read through it and um, you know sometimes it will have instructions about how to use what it's giving you and we've seen examples of where people like certainly we've seen this where people have been trying to cheat in exams and stuff like that and they've literally cut and pasted it in we have another part of our company where we have an, an assessment and exam product and literally people paste it in with the chat gbt instructions at the stop still there or the placeholders for them to change things um certainly it's it, like not it, it's i would say it's so new but actually it, i would say there's not many people using it on a day-to-day -day basis in a really smart way and i think if you can use it to like really help you accelerate so like that particular university and their course catalog as a project probably within a month you could have a course catalog that is a lot more engaging than what you have already it might be perfect, but it has to be better than what's there at the moment. Um, I would say keep your eye out. There's a lot of stuff going on around this area. Um, TikTok is actually very fast moving in YouTube. There's lots of YouTube tube shorts, examples of people doing different cool things on it. So that's a good place to find out what's happening because people like showing off their work. And I think what I would say is, if you get something out today, it's worth dipping your toe into this. Because I think even if you're using it to like help you with shorter pieces of work, if you can get to a place where you can chain these activities into multiple things, it can save you huge amounts of work overall. I could, it, it, you know, it could take out weeks out of a project if you're working on it. Um, so that's really it what I want to cover today. I, I hope I've sort of been able to give you a good example of uh, a, a good example of um, of you know, a practical use of some of these generative AI models. Uh, I really do, I'm excited though about the whole area of these base models and being able to feed in just your content, which links back to the question of like, you know, the um, can you have it scan your website? So that is where that is going. So, so just to give you a little bit of an insight into what we've seen so far is when we've been working on that internally, yes, we, you can. What, it's, what we're finding a little bit is trying, uh, the challenge is, is getting the tone of the answers right because it might be scanning your content like your, your, your course catalog content and everything, but the tone can be different on your website. So you sort of almost like need to make a decision of what should the tone be when you are talking to a student or um, a potential student. And it's trying to get that right, I think, is the key because it's getting content from lots of different places. The other thing, when we've set it off to index uh, um, websites internally, and you'll know this yourselves, is sometimes it's indexing content that may not be accurate either. So just because it's in your control and it's on your website doesn't mean it's accurate. So the problem is, is that if you're, say, chatting to us, say, as a potential student, it doesn't know exactly the source of where it's got that information. So it just means that whatever you are indexing, don't just put in, say, your base website URL unless you yeah, let it go everywhere. But if you're not sure about the quality of your content in some of the little tiny corners of your website. But this is an interesting area. We're putting a lot of work into it at the moment, just to, uh, with some prototypes and building on our own search product that we have. Um, but yeah, it's interesting from that point of view. I, you know, so I, I hope. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think John's made a really good point there. If some AI asks for writing samples so it can match your style. I, I found, with, certainly with ChatGPT, it sometimes can forget what you've told it around your style. Um, but what's re interesting is with this stuff, with the Microsoft Copilot stuff, this is like a plug-in type thing into like Microsoft Office, where it will like learn your style of your emails and it will help you write an email response and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be very interesting. But again, we need to check. I, I could do with that. I, I get around, I'm on so many mailing lists and things. I get around 600 emails a day. So even if it could auto trash the, the emails that aren't important, like I'd be happy enough with that. But uh, look, I hope today is, um, I hope today has been helpful and at least give you some interesting ideas of what, what you could use this for. But I'd say just jump in and play around with it. You know, the, the only caveat, sorry, I, I should have mentioned this earlier. What you do need to be careful of is, and say, for example, we have software developers within our company, is you want to be very carefully careful in putting up, say, more confidential information into it. it you don't know what it's going to do with it, like code or something like that. And um, so we tell our developers like we're, we're, we're using it in some ways, but we don't put code into the public engines because we don't know where that code is going to end up or how it's going to be used. So that's just be that's the one thing I would be careful about. Like, don't don't, for example, like upload all of your tax returns and uh, have it do analysis because, you know, into something public like chat GPT, because who knows what might happen? Um, maybe it might uh, steal your identity and that's a that's a, that's another movie we can work on together um once i get the rights on the script uh, i think together we should be able to pull together a movie pretty quickly on that on that basis but uh yeah well listen i hope that's helpful today and interesting and um you know i'm, I'm always interested if, if if you've got ideas yourselves um of how to use it in different ways or you have success you always share you have my details from earlier and uh yeah very happy to to chat or connect with you and you know, hopefully I get to meet some of you in person as well uh, at the different conferences over the, the next while. Well, thanks so much, Piero. We appreciate your time. And, um, you know, like you said, if you have a question or anything, reach out and let them know. And, and again, we thank you for um, not only taking the time to present today, but for your sponsorship of TACM and uh, really showing you support Texas Community Colleges and the folks that are doing the marketing efforts. No, great. And listen, feel free to pass around my contact details as well if anyone didn't catch them uh, at the very beginning as well. They're, everyone's very welcome to, to connect with me. Very happy to chat. Excellent. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, just a reminder that our next Lunch and Learn will be February 7th. Um, Alexander Gold is going to present on what local newspapers are looking for with their media releases. So if you're in a comms position, I think that'll be a great position for you. And uh, maybe with this and the combination of the next Lunch and Learn, you can have all of your media releases written by AI and know exactly what to send to them and save you even more time. So anyways, thanks again for joining yeah. us, everybody. We hope to see you soon. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to see you all. Take care.